Jen, you got me? Hey, brother. How are you? Now we got it. Oh, thank Praise God. Hey, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that was a Lord. lot. That was interesting. I mean, I had a lot of, a lot of, that's a lot of technical difficulties over here. That was um, really anyway. strange, brother. That is very strange. That's very interesting. Hey, let's start with the prayer, guys, okay? Let, let's start this one with a, a good prayer in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Uh, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. Um, Father, um, I just come before you honestly in all humility, and I just ask that you, uh, you know, guide our words and guide our thoughts and for the glorification of God and for bringing in the harvest, Father, because I know... Uh, our time is close, and it's always winding down. I want to thank you for having us in here and just all the people that are here to listen. Open the hearts and open the minds of everybody to receive truth. And you said your word is truth. And I pray that, that your word finds a place in all of our hearts. And amen. All right. Hey, Zen, what's up, brother? Hey, brother Jonathan. It's so good to be with you and your audience and for all the fellowship of, because I, I recognize so many people in the chat room and do you? So awesome. yeah, it's family, <laughs> you know. We're all yeah, one big family. <laughs> everybody's all yay. Zen's coming. I was like, oh, they're gonna throw rocks at me. <laughs> 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 Don't throw any rocks, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, hey man, dude. Okay, hey, just everybody, same as always, bro. Uh, I love you. We're just gonna hang out and we're just gonna talk. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Dude, this is a, there's some just awesome stuff, you know. Uh, for, look, a lot of people know, then a lot of people know you. Uh, I'm sure there's a uh, uh, part of the listening audience that doesn't know you. Uh, maybe you could just give them a, a little quick heads up, you know. I'm Zen Garcia. I got saved. This is what happened. This is what the Lord showed me, and this is what I'm doing, kind of. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, yeah, basically, you know, I'm Zen Garcia. I'm the author of six books. I've created a number of different movies. Uh, my next book coming out is Sons of God, Who We Are, Why We're Here, What This Is All About, uh, which I think ties together a lot of loose ends for people, hopefully. I've just been a researcher and a lover of the of the Father and of Great Mystery and uh, ever since I was young in my life, I've always been a, uh, hungry for knowledge of of just truth and mystery and mythology and history and everything. And in the pursuit of wisdom, um, the Lord led me to know him as the creator, and then he led me to understand who his son was. And um, when I came to know the son, the, the Lord really kind of just, like he did to you, Jonathan, he kind of uh, poured wisdom into me and filled me with instant knowing to to where I went into reading. I wanted to consume uh, everything as far as scripture because he had pulled me out of the New Age. I had studied um, in uh, New Age theosophies and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I read a lot of books as far as all that and, and went through Native uh, American uh, shamanic traditions and came to be with the, you know, with the Native Americans a lot in ceremony and learned a lot in that way and through those aspects and avenues. But the Father led me to understand who His Son was, and when I came to read all the scriptures with new, new eyes because I had never studied them prior, the way that He was leading me to study them now, and when I started to look again with the innocence of, you know, new discovery, I kept seeing things and certain things that kept poking themselves out to, me, out to me and presenting themselves to me, and one of those was the whole, you know, the father of Cain, and Cain being a, a hybrid child, and, um, and so I, it was, it was one of those things that became a skeleton key for unlocking so many other things. And so the, the Lord led me, you know, um, right. on a long run now. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, yeah. One door opens up, leads to another one, and it's just off to the races. I know that's kind of the way it's been going here, too. Um yeah, you know, then I was I was just checking out some of you know some of the stuff in your book. It's pretty amazing. You know, uh, I just 
I, I want to just throw some comments out there, and I just I would like for you to maybe just comment on it. Um, you know, when I got saved, Zen, and you know, you know the story, but but the first thing the Lord showed me was sheep, dead sheep. Okay, that was that was like number one, top of the list, and I did not. I mean, I cannot. You know, it, it all started with, you know, the pyramid was my enemy, everything's upside down, and I'm like, okay, right. and then he showed me the dead sheep, and then it went to the goats, and, and, and you'll see where I'm going with this in just a second, right. but I kind of want to stage this for everybody. So, you know, I had to, I had this mystery in front of me, I'd gotten super duper naturally said, it was insane, it was unbelievable, but I had all this knowledge that was dumped into me at one time, and it was, it, I, it was like a download, and even though I, I wasn't, you know, consciously aware of everything, you know, I knew it was there and it, it's been working its way out. And, and then the Lord, you know, gives me bits and pieces of the puzzle basically as I can handle them and as I can, as I can process it. And, right. and so it led me immediately, the sheep and the goats, uh, it led me to, uh, this uh, Genesis 6 thing, man. And that's where, that's literally, uh, that's where I started in the Bible. Um, because, you know, the, uh, the sheep and goat thing, I, I could not figure out why these sheep were dead and why these goats were alive and the goats were benefiting off the death of the sheep. And, and that was the story in the beginning for me. And that's when I was going, what, what is going on? And I, you know, and I, I knew I was saved and I knew I was manifesting spiritual gifting, but now we're in Genesis 6. And, and and I was reading. I mean, I, I I hope I can find this one. Uh, here we here we go. I found this one part of your book, and uh, it's on page uh, forty one, and it goes into page forty two, and uh, and, and I want to I want to read this, guys. This is from uh, Zen's book. It's called Lucifer, the Father of Cain, and I, I've jumped around it in a little bit, um, and there's just some awesome stuff, but um, I want to read some. So here, here it says, it says, because he could not exact revenge against the mighty might and the glory of Yahushua and the light, the light and the word of Yahweh, he would attempt as Satan, the adversary, to exact revenge against the second Adam, the creation of Adam, of paradise and his self-made Eve, in the guise and the form of a serpent. He would seduce Eve and impregnate her with Cain, consequently causing the fall of the Lord's most favored and exalted uh, creatures. Yahushua and the word was, uh, as the word was unable to finish unfolding the creation in fullness and innocence as originally intended by Yahweh because of the insurrection of Lucifer and his sin against Adam and Eve. In conclusion, I want to remind those that still doubt my assumption that Yahushua was the light of creation as revealed by the authoritative voice of the Father in the moment when light and darkness were separated, that in the New Testament it says, quote, And he carried me away in spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me a great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending down out of heaven. I know that one pretty good. That uh, because uh, that's a real sticker with me, you know. I I I've been going over that and actually the last couple shows. But I want you just to talk about this for a sec, because Genesis 6.4 says, when the sons of God saw the beautiful women of the human race, they took any they wanted as their wives, and when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they did bear children to them. Okay, sons of God, Ben Ai Elohim, right? But the right. of God also comes along with Satan. Right. Right. So right. Well, why don't you talk a little bit about Genesis 6.4 and, and the proximity of, of what we're talking about in this particular part of your book. Okay. To summarize the quotation that you brought forth, I'll start with Genesis 6, but we'll have to go back further. Okay. And even further than Genesis 6, 316 and what happened in the garden yeah. what we have to go back to is the second day when light and darkness were separated because here's a story that most people don't understand is when lucifer was originally banished from the heavens this happened on the second day and this was when light and darkness was separated what caused 
uh, Lucifer to contrive envy in his heart is when the son, Yahushua, the word, was given dominion of the creation. Because the story is unfolded like this. If you read the pseudepigraphal, the apocryphal, the extra-biblical books, it will mm-hmm. fill in the details of the story of, of, uh, of our Lord and how he came into dominion. And this mm-hmm. happened on the second day. It was when the, the Father said, let there be light. So when he said, let there be light, our Lord, Yahushua, who is known as the Word and the embodiment of the Father, he brought the entire universe, the entire creation, into visibility. In that mm-hmm. moment, when all things became visible, that was when light and darkness were separated. That was when our Lord was given dominion over the creation. That's Lucifer, as, Lucifer, as the first angel created, because it says in the Gospel of Bartholomew that he was created the first angel even before Michael created him, and that he was created even by the Word, uh, mm-hmm. that he, he, wanted, um, he wanted to head the Morning Star administration that Yahushua, the Word, was just given dominion over. And so that's when he contrived envy in his heart. He said he wanted to place his throne uh, above the, in the size of the north and to assume the throne of our Lord, and that was when he was cast out of the heavens. So that was the original enmity that began the war between uh, the Word, Yahushua, uh-huh. and Satan and his rebel angels. That was the original rebellion. On the second day, they were cast out. They were cast down to the visible realm, which became the material universe, and that includes this earth. They were roaming through this solar system. They had, uh, they had full reign of, of the other planets, and they had actually set up way stations on other planets. And I talk about this in my work. But this will lead to Genesis chapter 3. Because right. this is what you just read. Because mm-hmm. Yahushua banished Lucifer from the upper heavens, he contrived to take, um, re- um, he was jealous and he rebelled and he decided to take revenge against Adam and Eve. So when our Lord created Adam and Eve on the sixth day, the fallen angels, the rebel angels, they had already free roam from the second to the sixth day. Of, in this solar system, and they had already set up civilizations and cultures and, um, and have created prior to the creation of modern humanity, modern-day Adam and Eve. So and pre-Adamic man is what you're saying, right? Right. For, and yeah, only, for the... yeah, right. And the megalithic structures that we find on this planet, uh, the ones that we find under the ocean, because we know that the Lord destroyed them with a flood, more than one time. Um, even Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 talks about that. Um, Peter 2, uh, chapter 3 talks about that as well. Okay. About a previous destruction. So he took revenge against Adam and caused the fall of Adam and Eve, who were also clothed in light, and they were in a place called paradise. They were not here on the earth. Paradise is not this planet, not this earth. Paradise is where we fell from, and it's a whole different place. That's where New Jerusalem is. That's where, uh, when Christ said, "I I go now to uh, go to prepare to prepare a place for you." Yeah, a place for you um, in my house are many in my mansion are many. Uh, my rooms. house are many. Yeah, 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 yeah my, in many mansions. Yeah, yeah. It, that so that is that's where also when he died on the cross, he took all the patriarchs up into heaven. That's a whole other story, first resurrection. We can talk about that another time. But so when Adam and Eve, when they fell into the flesh, they were actually cast out of paradise and placed here on the Garden of Eden, on the earth where we are now. This is where incarnation would take place. And uh, you know, Johnny, uh, as well as I, and and, um, John the Baptist also has come to this revelation that we are first world age spirits that we had previous existence that we had prior lives to this one that we are in the flesh right you you know that's something i really want to talk 
with everybody about. And let, let me just jump in real quick, guys. Guys, yeah. there, there's something going on, and, and here's the way it works with me. I, you know, a testimony is a testimony like you're in court. When you go to court and you get up on the stand, they say, you know, do you so solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So me, God, which first of all, it's a trap. <laughs> but uh, besides all that, when you testify, you go and you say only what you know, you know, you know, you can experience and what you can testify to. Now, I'm going to testify to something to you. And it's it's just a fact, and this is just a fact, okay? And I don't know what to do with it sometimes. I'll be totally honest with you guys. Sometimes I don't even know what to do with this. But it has to do with what Zen is saying. And, and I'm telling you, you know, when the Lord was unpacking these gifts that he gave me, and he was unpacking all this stuff like the hieroglyph and all this stuff that's hidden on the U.S. Currency. I mean, because I was making pyramids out of it all and turning it upside down, and then the Lord showing me, you know, the dead sheep everywhere, and then, you know, the the virgin thing, you know, because I was in the alley standing there praying with Michael. He said, you know, after I got saved, now you pray a hail Mary, and and I and, and light left my body. I mean, guys, this is real important because, I mean, I'm on a journey too. I'm I'm on, I'm still on this journey. And y'all know that the sunglass company that I had before I got saved was called Vampires. Vampires. Well, a vampire is a supernatural being. It's like the, you know, supernatural. Um, and he, they, they, they live off the souls of the living. They, they, have to, they have to feed on them. That's how vampires stay going. You know, so, so here's the deal. So that being said, my, my whole sunglass company was based on the idea that our sunglasses were so good that vampires could come out of the darkness and into the light now. Okay? That was the whole idea for selling these glasses. That was, the, that was our marketing. It, it was the best marketing in the world. It still is. Get us this book of world records twice. But here's the point. It was all about light and darkness. And now I'm sitting here listening to Zen. Zen, I've never heard you say this. I've never heard you say this. And I'm sitting here just going, my mouth is hanging open, and I'm just going like, you got to be kidding me. This makes a lot of sense. So here's what I'm going to testify to. I'm going to testify to the fact that I got called. I got called in an alley in the presence of an angel. Um, I was told to say, I, I, I was said in Our Father, with Michael alongside of me, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I was told to say a Hail Mary. Okay, now this is really important. Y'all have heard me say this before. When I started praying the prayer, light started leaving my body. I was filled with light the second I got saved. So how come when I said a Hail Mary, you know, uh, Light started leaving me. I started feeling, and I, I knew it was death. I knew it was death itself. So here's the deal. The Lord showed me, and I, well, once again, I shared this with you once or maybe a long time ago, but just last night I shared this with you because I knew Zen was coming on, and I knew this would come up. So here's the deal. Y'all know Jonathan Kleck is the guy that turns everything upside down, right? That's like my trademark. That's what I do. And and I show you the hidden, the hidden world mystery Babylon, and I and it's revealed to me that way. So here's the deal: the Lord told me when I was seeking answers, I was like, "Why, why does my name, Jonathan Cleck? It means Yahweh has given a messenger that rings a bell, that sounds an alarm, that rings a church bell, and and warns everybody. Warns them for what?" Warns them because Jesus is coming to judge the earth. Warns them to repent. Warns them of the cataclysms that are coming, that are planned out. And he let me see what's planned out, which is printed on your $10 bill, your $50 bill. So then he tells me, and guys, this is personal. This is very personal. I'm sitting in my driveway. Johnny Baptist is here from Florida. And we're doing the, you know, the, the final warning series. And, uh, I'm telling you, man, I'm asking the Lord for some answers, and the Lord lets, says to me, I'm saying, who am I? Like, what is this all about? You know, what's going on? I, I'm, I'm trying to understand, and I was trying to understand 
uh, John, I think it's John 10, then, it says, Have I not said ye are gods? Right. And that the word of God came unto them who are called gods, then why do you, and, and, then, and then God, Jesus clarifies it. He says, and if the scriptures cannot be broken. So he seals the deal right there. He sealed it. He said, guys, why? I mean, the word of God, capital G, came unto them who are called gods, uh, little g, with an F. And if the word of God came unto them who are called gods, and the, and the scriptures cannot be broken, then why do you marvel that I say I'm the Son of God, who was anointed and came into the world? I, you know, Jesus was just like slam dunking the deal right there. So the Lord told me, Johnny, why do you think you're always falling out of the sky, <laughs> upside down? I mean, guys, come on, just be realistic. Why is every single point of purchase ad, every single one, I'm upside down in? I got ones where I got tennis shoes on. I got ones where I don't have tennis shoes on, where I'm barefoot. I got ones where I'm uh, in a black jumpsuit and white jumpsuit. It doesn't matter. I'm always upside down, falling out of the sky. Now, do you know what the odds of that are? It's impossible. And then that's when the Lord told me, why do you think you're always falling out of the sky, upside down? Because I knew you before the foundation of the world. And okay, now I'm going to give it back to you then, because that's where the Lord literally cracked me in half. I sat there and I bawled my head off because I knew it was true. And now here's what's interesting. You know, Zen's talking about separating the light and the dark. And I'm sitting here going, come out of the darkness and the light. And I'm going, some really huge is wrapped up in all this that Zen's talking about. Something very huge. And I'm going to have to say, I agree. I, I just, guys, I don't know if one shoe fits all, but listen to me. I know the shoe fits me. And I think that's where we're trying to go. Who are we? Where did, you know, what's the deal? What's this all about? So anyway, back to you, Zen. I, I'm on that page, guys. So, just so you know. Uh, I think this is um, a very relevant and, and it's a very profound revelation for people to um, come to understand and to come to accept in their own lives because if you can come to terms with the things that we're bringing forth and Jonathan and I, we're confirming witness for each other. Uh, the Lord has allowed our fellowship to, to play out that way. And the the Bible says, out of the mouths of two or three witnesses shall the truth be established. So, for for us, this is this is our truth, and this helps to explain so much of what has been left untouched, and where people get so confused on things as such as incarnation and reincarnation and all these different things. If you can. If you can just get my fourth and my sixth book, it'll explain all these things. So continuing, um, continuing with this revelation, because I got to tie all of this together. And I saw, uh, I saw um, a question in the chat room where people were asking about the the Watcher Rebellion and also the Rebel Angels. And no, they are not the same thing. The Watchers is something that happened during the time of Yared, and that was after the condemnation of Adam and Eve and their placement here on the earth with the fallen angels and all the rebel angels. Now, the Watchers joined them after um, seven generations during the time of Yared when they came down, and this is described in Genesis 6. But we have to go, we have to continue with the enmity in the garden, Genesis chapter 3, because it's important for people to understand what happened here. Okay, so when Lucifer, because he, according to the scripture, he was a cherub angel that was transformed into a seraphim angel, one of these dragon-like angels that we come to know as the seraphim angels and that are, you know, that we also know as these reptilian shape-shifting beings. That's interesting, Zen. Wow. Yeah, and and he had this form um, even 
before uh, before he was in the garden. Um, but anyways, he, he utilized the serpent form in the garden um, to seduce Eve. And what we know as the Nakash is not a serpent as, a, as described in snake form. What is known as the Nakash and what the early patriarchs known as the Nakash is the upright shining one. That there were a particular, that these beings, these seraphim angels, they were known and they were described. And Johnny, when you came on my show, I read that passage right. from the Emerald Tablets of Thought. Right. You know, which gave vivid introspection into this phenomenon. And so it's important for people to understand that what happened in the garden is that Lucifer seduced Eve and that when they ate of that apple or that fruit, they lost their immortal bright nature. They were clothed with light. So here, Johnny, they are now going to be transformed from light into darkness. They lose their immortal bright natures. They're going to now be transformed into flesh, and then all the prophecies of Genesis 3 would be fulfilled. But that would not happen until the eighth day. This is important to understand, too, because people, uh, what happened on the sixth day was an event that took place in paradise. Now, on the eighth day, Adam and Eve were transformed into flesh, and they were placed on the wilderness of the earth. That's this planet here. So on the eighth day, once they were transformed into flesh, then they were all the prophecies of Genesis 3 were fulfilled. Eve was raped by the archon. She was impregnated with Cain. Cain became the firstborn a hybrid child, and he was also um, he was he, you know he was uh, the he was a hybrid fallen angel and also uh, the first mortal. He was. Um, you know, he was the first hybrid being, and he had his own bloodline, his own seed line. And this is not the seed of Adam, who we've come to know as the line of Seth and the line of the patriarchs, the, the priests that were taught through Adam's lineage. And mm -hmm. they're, they're brought up in Genesis chapter 5. But in Genesis chapter 4, um, it talks about Cain. Uh, being this, you know, born in this hybrid child. And if you actually go back and you study what are called the Targums, these are different language translations that were based on the Hebrew scriptures, the old Torah at that time. And I'm not talking about the Septuagint that was written in Greek. These, tor um, these Targums were written from the Hebrew scriptures when the people were taken into Babylon and exiled there they forgot the original Hebrew. So the Hebrew Torahs were then translated by the priest into Aramaic and also Palestinian. Well, these translations are called Targums, and they're available to us. Well, when you go read the translations from the Targums, they tell you that in Genesis chapter 4-1, they attribute a Cain to being a son of the angel of death. Um, and they they say that he's the son of Samuel, who is um, uh, one, also one of the names of Satan. Uh, Samuel, uh, I forget exactly what. I think his name is Poison or something mm -hmm. like that. But anyway, so that's what happened in Genesis chapter three. So that caused us to fall into the flesh. Now, when uh, when we fell into the flesh. This is where the second world age would play out, and this is where we would incarnate into flesh to be given another choice, another opportunity, another chance to prove which side we're on. That this is, is where so, the harvest is going to take place. Yeah, now, now just, I got to jump in. Sure, Listen, please, that is just so fascinating because... There's something about everything that's going on, and I, you know, and I can't help it. Then I always have to go to, well, well, the Lord showed me all this stuff supernaturally, and and then I start applying it. And then what you're saying is that you know maybe like I was talking about the other night, um, you know, with with, with the audience was, you know, when the Lord told me, I mean, I'm telling you guys, 
when, when I heard the Lord's voice, and I'm going to finish off what he said to me, he said, why do you think you're always falling from the sky upside down? And and why do you think your name means, you know, Yahweh has given a, a, a messenger that sounds an alarm. And I'm sitting there just trying to wrap my brain around it, you guys. And I'm sitting there in my driveway just going, well, what, what is it? I mean, what's the deal? Now, here's, you want to you wanna bust down in tears? You ready for this? Are you ready for this? I'm sitting there going, okay, well, did, did you, so you came and you saved us. So you, Father, you took on the form of, of a man. And he, listen to what I heard. This is what I heard. I heard, I took the same punishment as you to come get you. I was like, what? And I thought about it. I was like, oh, my gosh. God, you know, came in the flesh. He had to come in the flesh. Think about it for a second. That means because the penalty had to be paid in the flesh. That was the currency, guys. The currency has got to be paid in kind. Does that make sense to you? Because I was going, wait a minute, well, so, okay, I understand my name means Yahweh has given a messenger. Uh, yeah, I'm always falling out of the sky upside down. That's why you called me by my name, which it says in the Bible. You know, I, then I don't know if you've seen Isaiah 45, but the Lord slammed me with that one the other day. He said, you know, you read it, it says, thus saith the Lord to his Cyrus is anointed. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. And riches hidden in secret places, which is what he shows me, that you may know that I, who called you by your name, am the Holy One of Israel. Well, dude, I literally wrote that exact same thing down on my personal testimony before I've ever even read that scripture. I wrote that, I, you know, the Lord had saved me but from a light so bright that even the darkness and the lies could not hide from it. And the gift he gave me was a light so bright that the darkness and the lies could not hide from it. And I knew emphatically that the Holy One of Israel was my God because of the gift. Of showing me the treasures of darkness. And there it is in Isaiah 45. And I'm going, how in the world is this possible? This is not possible. And so I'm sitting here listening to these things that you're saying. And I'm telling you guys, this is me personally, everyone that's listening. I'm just saying, you know, guys, it's adding up to everything that's happened to me in my personal testimony. And so there's something very amazing here. I'm sorry, I just got to jump in when you hit on these. So yeah, the, it, it looks like we were involved in something, right? Absolutely. And what? That's the question. And that's what my next book is about, because it explains this. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said... Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Oh, but ye oh. shall die like, like men, men, and fail, fall like, like one of, one the of princes. their princes. Yeah, well, we know who that prince is. Oh. That, according to Isaiah chapter fourteen and Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight, Satan also is in the form of a, of a man, and will die the death of a man. And it also says in Isaiah 14 that the Lord will kill off his seed and not allow them to inhabit and inherit any cities. And we know that Matthew chapter 13 is the perfect parable that explains all these things, where the Lord said that um, the children of the devil are the you know the seed of the wicked one. Right. And, I mean, no, it explains it all there: the wheat and the tares. The yeah, the wheat and, and the, the tares. Sheep. And what's amazing about Wheat and Tares also, guys, just I don't know if everybody knows, it's a little bit of sidebar, but did you know that Wheat and Tares are literally identical until right. the time of this? Well, you want to hear something freaky? Then you've heard the story about the kid that drew the picture of me with the dead sheep on my face in Starbucks? Mm -hmm. Dude, yeah. tell me that's not a tear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, somebody tell me that that's not a tear. Of course it is. That's a tear, guys. And and the thing is, somehow, 
I mean, what do you think about this? And, I mean, they've got to be able to zero in on us somehow because I've had too many pics, people give me pictures of myself with dead sheep on my face. I mean, what's up mm -hmm. with that? <laughs> I mean, I mean they got to recognize us. You know, there's there's something going on. Well, here's the thing. is uh, For as much as Christians and certain people are waking up to the truth that is the light, there are so many that are dedicated, that are minions of darkness, that are working in the establishment, that work through the New World Order, that have been bred through generational families, and that are dedicated, committed to evil, and committed to to doing the work and the uh, the deeds of Satan. Right. And, and we don't understand how profound and how powerful this group is and how how um how much they influence all the things of the world and all the different things that influence and impact our lives we do, we don't understand how much darkness is surrounding us um and so it's important in, in you know in in that book the the emerald tablets of thought it also talks about the sons of light or the sons of the law of one and and the sons of Belial and how there's a a group of angels that are totally dedicated to the preservation of humanity and for looking after our well-being and for caring after us and that this war has gone on before even the creation of humanity and so that's why it's important, in my opinion, to understand what the war in heaven was about, uh, how it led to the three groups, one of them falling, one of them rebelling, the middle group. What happened to the middle group? What happened to the open and angels? What did they do uh, during the war in heaven when the cherubs were fighting the seraphim angels? And what people don't understand is we are they. We are also that group. We were the, the fence riders. We were the fence sitters. Not all of us, because there are those also that are incarnated from the elect, and also those that are incarnated from the, the rebel angels uh, and the fallen angels, and that side of the, of the equation as well. But for those that are on the middle road that were the fence sitters, and that's a large part of us, we have this decision while we are in the flesh now. We have chance again to prove our worth and to prove whom we choose to serve. And there's only two choices. You can serve light or you can serve darkness. You can serve Yahushua and the Morning Star Administration or you can serve Satan and, and the rebel angels, the fallen angels that, that join them, the watchers that join them later. Because uh, they are totally dedicated to evil, and they know their sentence. They know that they are going to be eradicated as if they had never existed. Complete um, demolition. Complete yeah, devastation. You, you know, some that's interesting, you, I, I know you're right. You know how I know? Because the, the kid, not just the kid, Alex, that drew the picture of me with the dead sheep, you know, that I knew he was going to do it. When I walked into Starbucks, you know, I'd go in there and see Chris, you know, and uh, this kid always had a, he has a persona, and he would wink his eye and point his finger at me. He'd always wink, hey, John, you know, the Bible says those that wink the eye divides perverse things that bring evil to pass. And there's several other scriptures about winking the eye. But when you close one eye, it, it, you know, if you look at things in the sense of duality, like let's say one eye is light, one eye is darkness. Let's look at it that way. Okay, you got one eye of light, one eye of darkness. If you close one eye that's the one that's accessible to the light, then all you're looking at from the other eye is darkness. I'll call that the all-seeing eye. That's what I'm going to define it as for y'all. And so when I see that, the spirit inside of me, you know, and I have the discerning of spirit, sees that and recognizes the darkness, and let me give it to you this way, the shadow behind the eyes. 
And so, have you ever noticed that the Bible says if the eye be single, the whole body is full of light? Of light. Well, isn't that interesting? Because on the on the hieroglyph and all the stuff I've been showing everybody, it's always duality. It's always sheep and goats, wheat and weeds, see the serpent, see the woman. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's always the duality. Well, check it out. When I got saved, when I got saved, my vision changed dramatically. And I could see everything I'm showing you all now. Before, it was right in front of me, and I couldn't see it. And I got a perfect example. I got another picture of myself that's drawn on that piece of wood that that guy, Marcel, he came up and handed me a picture of myself. He had drawn of me, you know, in pencil on a piece of wood as a vampire. And, and, and he handed it to me, and I looked at it, and that was in 2001. I was not saved. And I looked right at it, man. I'm like, hey, thank you very much. That's great. You know, I appreciate it, whatever, you know. And But then after I got saved and I looked at it, I was like, whoa. Well, now guess what? The whole body was full of light. Do you get it, guys? After I got saved, my eye became single. It was no longer double. And because it was no longer double, I had laser vision of light that I could discern very quickly what was in front of me. And I was just blown away. I was like, oh, my gosh, why did this guy put a dead sheep on my head? Think about that, a dead sheep and a goat on the back of my head. And the goat had a delta symbol on the nose. Delta means change. So we're choosing, I mean, would you say, Zin, that it's accurate to say that the human race is changing from light to darkness? Absolutely. When we came into the flesh, we fell into the duality. Here on, in this world and in, in this flesh, we have the capacity to feel the full pleasure, uh, the full spectrum of pain and pleasure, the whole knowledge of good and evil. But it's only through the flesh and in this time while we're in the flesh that we make these choices. But you have to make the choice to follow the spirit or to follow the flesh because one will lead you to light and one will lead you to darkness. As it talks about, Paul talks about this in Romans where he says well, we live not for the flesh, but we live for the spirit. Mm -hmm. and this is the choice that we have, because we also are fallen angels incarnated into the flesh. God. We are not in our first estate. We are fallen. We are in the flesh, so we are in this, this, this world of duality. And we also have this incredible opportunity, because... We know, Jonathan, you know, I know, that this is it. We are the fig tree generation, that we will be witness to yeah. the return of the Son of Man. We wouldn't are that, that generation. Wouldn't that be a perfect... Guys, listen to this, listen to this, this just came to me. Wouldn't that be the perfect, perfect way to sort out who belongs to who? You know, choose life or exactly. choose... Exactly. Choose light or choose darkness. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since since there was a since there was a rebellion and everybody's guilty by association or exactly. fitness or whatever. You know what? God God in His justice could be just. Could say, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I know. Let's say you, 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 and you, you guys. I know your hearts. I know you weren't really in it. I know you guys were guilty by association. So I'm going to throw a scripture at you. Get ready. So God could be a just God and condemn the ones that absolutely deserve to be condemned. And then he could come get the ones that he knew deserved not to be condemned. But being a just God, he said, I'm going to have to give you all the same punishment. Y'all are all going to be living this duality. You're going to be part light, part darkness. And here's the deal. No one comes to the Son unless the Father draws them. Not only that, Jonathan, but he took on the flesh himself. Yes. He came into flesh himself and lived a sinless life to show us and to prove to us 
and the fallen angels and the rebel angels that he is the author of life and death and that he can give salvation and eternal life, eternal rest, and a place with him in paradise for eternity to whomever he chooses. Yes, amen to that, brother. It just, it just, it's so, guys, this is so obvious. I'm, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I'm sitting here looking at pictures of me falling upside down out of the sky. I'm carving a statue that's identical to a hieroglyph that's 1,300 years old, and it's not because I wanted to carve it that way. It's because the Lord let me carve it that way. So I could see these things, and I'm telling you guys, come out of the darkness and into the light. Nothing's changed. We got to come out of the darkness, and we got to come into the light. But it's a choice of your will. You got to exercise your will. You got to choose it. Doesn't Deuteronomy say, "Choose this day whom you will serve." You know, choose life or choose death. There was a question in your chat room from G4, and, and that question was, um, well, he made a comment, or she made a comment, and basically said, I never knew why we were here for or what we came into the flesh for. And I'll tell you that the whole reason we came into the flesh was to prove through our actions, through our every thought, every word, every deed, everything that we do, every way that we are while we're here in the flesh, as to who we love. Who we oh. love, whether it's the Lord or Satan oh or my self. Gosh. Guys, we are jump, proving man. with every second, every act, every deed, just who we truly do love. Amen. To those that love the Lord, are going to be with him in his paradise, in his eternal rest, and his evil, free world. Guys, you know, I know, listen to me, please. I, I, I want to talk to you all as, as a, just a group and as a family. Guys, I know we all struggle with, with certain things. Each Everybody has their own struggle. Satan hits you at your weakest point because he wants to take you away from your father. He wants revenge, man. And the way for him to get that revenge is to get you from your father. If he can get you, he knows that is the best way for him to exact his revenge is to not let you make it. That's Man, guys, some of the stuff that I've decrypted, I'm telling you, I won't even show it to you because it's so foul. It's so, it's so bad. It's so bad that some of it I can't even show. I mean, if I put it on YouTube, I would be censored and I would be thrown out. But the, the hatred, the hatred that's involved in some of the images that I decrypt is staggering. It's so bad. So then think of the antithesis of that and think of God's love. Don't give Satan any foothold in your life. You know what I mean? Just turn away from whatever darkness. Um, guys, you know, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud and just trying to preach to y'all. God bless you. Don't let it. Don't let down your guard. Don't, you know, don't overstep your boundaries. And I'm, I'm talking to myself too. We all have that tendency. And you know, Zen, dude, man, I'm just here. We go again. I talked to you know Professor Truth the other night. He was on and. We had a great talk, and here we go again, man. <clears throat> I'm just buzzing. Did you hear that little scream I just did there? <laughs> That's because I got zapped so hard right there. <laughs> That's awesome. So what do you think, Zen? You think we're on the countdown, buddy? <laughs> Absolutely. We are the fig tree generation. I know. Uh, and we will be witness. And, and, you know, I don't know exactly when. With the day or the hour, but we are called to recognize the signs and the seasons, and um, and I know you know there's the fig tree, the the parable of the fig tree in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, but there's also this book called the Apocalypse of Peter. In the Apocalypse of Peter, Peter asks the Lord specifically what he means by the parable of the fig tree. 
And the Lord tells them specifically in this passage, and you can look it up yourself. He tells them that when you see the nation of Israel come into being again, and we all know that that was all pulled off, you know, by the New World Order, the Rothschild establishment, and they pulled all right, that. But right, nothing right. can be done unless the Lord allows it and approves of it. But that truly was a sign for our generation that when we saw Israel come into being again as a nation, that the countdown would begin, that this would be the generation. That generation that saw that nation come into being again would be that generation that would be witness to the return of the Lord. So we are that, and we will be witness to him since returning again. So get right with him yesterday. Yeah, yeah, Dad. See, that's what I, that's what I keep t saying. You know, I've, I've been, you know, I have, you know, some, some, some people that are, you know, I've gotten to know uh, through, through the show and stuff. And, and, you know, I, I tell everybody, guys, I, I don't do, I don't do uh, rapture calendars. I don't do arrival calendars. What I will do, and, and I, I'll take all the rocks you got to throw at me, is if I see one of the events like uh, the stuff on the the U.S. currency, just like the Hoover Dam thing. And I told everybody, I said, do I believe it's coming, that the Hoover Dam may go on that day? You betcha. Did and then I said, but is it possible that day will come and go and nothing will happen? Absolutely. However, as a watchman, I want everybody to understand something. We are required, required, if you see the sword coming and you warn not the people, and they die in their iniquity, well, then God is going to hold you responsible. Now, I don't know exactly how that plays out, but I'll tell you what. If I see something coming, and I believe, and I really believe that there's going to be a false flag event or something like that, how, heck yeah, I'm going to say, guys, I think something's going to happen. Is it possible nothing will happen? Yes, but it's a call to repentance for someone that may go, wow, this really may be it as far as, you know, like a, a massive stage event in the U.S. And it may be the thing that gets one person right with God. Do you understand? So I want everybody to keep that in mind. But I'm not doing rapture or, you know, arrival calendars. I, I, I don't do those. Um, you know, I, I, I know that we're in the season. I, I'm sure of it. One thing, you know, just like Zen said, you know, we uh, we're, we're, we are to know the seasons. Man, and here's the other thing. The abomination of desolation, guys, that is my thing. I mean, if you want to see what the abomination of desolation is, just go look at the hieroglyph. Yeah, you know what? You can actually watch the Lady Gaga uh, <laughs> video on Jay Leno and watch her come out of a reptile egg, and you could even figure it out from that. But, uh... Yeah, the abomination of desolation now has been made public. Okay, have you seen it yet? No, because I was talking to Professor Truth today, and I want to share this with you. The Bible says, therefore, when you see the abomination that causes desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, it says, reader, pay attention. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then it says, I'm just going to paraphrase, get out of town, haul ass, go, run. And here's the reason why. When the switch gets flipped and that alien demonic presence, the darkness that's inside the human race, and all the tears get activated right in front of your face, you're going to look at them and go, these are not us. And you're gonna, that's going to be the scariest thing that ever hit you, and I'm telling you from experience, I'm testifying right now, because that's what happened to me the night I got saved. I got, uh, you know, I got to see the activation of that presence inside a secret organization of the San Antonio Police Department. And isn't it funny that their badges are an alien head? So, you know, I don't, I don't know, when that day comes, and when it when it does happen, it won't be that you guys are looking at the abomination of desolation that I've let you guys get a preview of, 
It's a preview that I'm giving you. I'm just saying, hey, this is what the Lord showed me. This is the abomination. An abomination is an especially detestable, heinous thing. Okay, that's what that demonic thing is. That causes desolation. Desolation, desolate, like a desert, no life. No light. It becomes desolate. The light disappears. Okay? So that day is coming too. And uh, hopefully the, by that day uh, we'll be out of here. <laughs> Just, anyway. <laughs> it's, yeah, but anyway, you know, I'll uh, we'll talk about that later, Revelation 3 and Revelation 21. I, I just find them all so fascinating. So, tell us about your new book, brother. I want to know what's going on. I'm I'm, I'm behind, dude. I, oh I got, goodness! I got Lucifer, the Father of Cain, to read. I want. What was the What was the one you and Johnny just talked about? Uh, the Sons of God. This is my sixth my sixth book. And Let's talk about up. the Sons of God for a minute, dude. Yeah. Well, basically, we've been talking about it. Um, okay. That book is everything that we just talked about except for I bring um, scripture from so many different places and sources and uh, and I also help to explain the the Genesis 1 creation, the primitive worker um, from both the Sumerian side of it as well as the biblical text and, and, uh, and I quote from uh, so many different books and so many different sources but basically this book my next book explains all the things that I just talked about here. Where can people um, go to get your book? Hey, you know what? Can we just do a plug for the book now so while, while we're talking about it? Can you tell everybody where to go to get copies of these of your books? Yeah, you can um, go to lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com, or Amazon.com, um, barnesandnoble.com. Just type in Lucifer, Father, and Cain. You'll find several different sources um but if you go to lulu you can get my my fourth and my fifth book are available there um my my other books are out of print my first three my first book is called look somewhere different my second book was when the evening dies my third book is a different way of being and my fourth book was lucifer father of cain my fifth book is awakened to the new world order and this book is the sons of God, who we are, and why we're here. And uh, basically, it's everything that we've been talking about in the show. It's um, it's a summary of really my life's work. Uh, in that, the Lord has led me to this really this final revelation that ties all things together. And uh, you and and John the Baptist and our brother Professor Truth and. Uh, Alexander Bachman, so many people are being led to be confirming witness for each other on this revelation. You know what's so it's a beautiful thing. It is. You know what's interesting is we all come about it a different way. Exactly. That's, That's what what's so mind-blowing. That's what I get so excited about. I'm like, you know, because I really do sometimes, I feel just, you know, man, I'm like, uh, Gee, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. I just, I feel like uh, uh, kind of weird, you know, like, uh, you know what? Here's a good word. I feel like a peculiar people. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel, <laughs> I, you know, you know, then uh, uh, First Peter 2 says, he said, it says, you are a chosen people, uh, a holy nation, God's special possession, uh, you know, a royal priestood to declare oh, a, a peculiar people yeah that to declare the praises of the lord who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light dude i i i freak out when i go to scripture and i see the words darkness and light together even the coming of the lord guys listen to this even the coming of the lord it says this day will not overtake you like a thief because you are not of the darkness you are children of the light how do you think we know this stuff you know what i mean right. i mean that's how right. we know it because we're children of the light that's why we're trying to tell you guys guys the day's coming it's coming 
Because we're uh, talking yeah. about blast, yeah. And that's why I think the Lord has, you know, revealed these things to us because, you know, the hour is so late. Yes. Um, and, and things are accelerating so fast. And, and it's going to take such radical and profound truths as, as those that we are bringing forth to really bring people to understand who our Lord is. Because if you don't understand that, as John chapter 1 says, that the Son is all light, that everything sat in darkness and was in, in not even in visibility until he was called forth by the Father, said, let there be light, all things came into being. It says in Job that the, the sons of the morning shouted for joy at, at being able to now be witness and see see the creation without our lord we wouldn't even be able to see anything and, and yeah. it talks about this also that before light and darkness were separated the angels sat in darkness and sat in a momentary pause they thought themselves pre-existent beings but then when they saw the light called forth they knew that the voice that said let there be light that that was their creator also and that the light that he called forth was the son who was given dominion of the creation and who was the actual first Adam and also the physical embodiment of the Father. Because he is the embodiment of the Father. The Father and the Son are one. Yes. And by the way, guys, that's critical. That is, that's a, that's a, that's a no uh, argumentation point there, because I see, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I get to see a lot, and I get to see a lot of people trying to kind of, you know, whittle away some of the, some realities. If, if if they don't say that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, watch out. Absolutely, they are antichrist. Then those that deny that He is God in the flesh, right? And also, you have to understand who our Lord is in his most amazing, omnipotent embodiment, in order for you to understand that as a creature, even as an angel fallen into the flesh, that we can never, never equal ourselves to the glory of the Son, who is the only begotten, who is the embodiment of the Father, who is the light that brought all things into visibility. Don't equate yourself to being as the Son, because we will never, ever be able to embrace that embodiment. He is within us, and we have him as part of ourselves, and in our, the fullness of our embodiment, we will be as like him. But still, it is only he working through us that allows us to even equal his glory but that we could never equal the glory of the Son in his full capacity as God. Right. Because we are a creature, and it's important to understand. And yeah, that's one and... thing Lucifer never realized, because if he would have realized that, he would have known that it was fruitless for him to ever pursue or to ever effort. You, you, know, what, the the Lord. you know what's interesting? A lot of people don't know this, but I, I guys, I want to just, Throw some stuff out that you know out of your just scripture and some stuff. A lot of people don't know this, but you know, read the book of Jude. It says, "And the angels, when they sinned, you know, the angels sinned, guys." It says it right there in the Bible. And the angels, when they sinned, were cast into dungeons of darkness. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Angels sinned. Well, I wonder what the penalty for sinning is when you're an angel. Well, maybe it's being cast down into a human body. <laughs> and having be having to be a hybrid. That would suck. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but, it does. but yeah, it does. I hate my <laughs> like, ah, I'm like, ah, I went out. <laughs> I'm just ah someone get me out of here. Yeah. It's crazy, but you know, and then what's amazing is, you know, you, you get saved. When, when I got saved, you know, death is no longer burdensome. 
And everybody lives in fear of death. Hey, man, death's the door out, dude. Once you've overcome death, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know what I mean? It's like done. You're finished. It's like and the yeah, only way to, nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, the, the only way to overcome death is through the one that overcame it. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. isn't he the one that walked out? He's the one. I just I wish I could let you guys lift the lid and and jump in Johnny's brain every now and then. <laughs> yeah, good. There's a, there's not very many exit signs. <laughs> it's like <laughs> There's a lot going on, guys. I'll tell you what. There's, it's really exciting. This excites me so much because, it, to me, it's so obvious. You know, here's another one. Ready? Okay, here's another one. These are just popping in my head while we're hanging out. Okay, here's another one. Ready? For those who are worthy of the resurrection, who are accounted worthy of the resurrection, are no longer married or given in marriage, for they are equal unto the angels. Uh huh. What do you do with that? They are equal unto their first estate. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of scriptures, guys, that if people look at them and you think about it, and you go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Angels when they sinned? Yeah. Angels when they sinned. Angels had free cho free will. So, you know, you get to get cast down and, you know, some of them are guaranteed, uh, you know, their judgment that's coming because they absolutely refuse the punishment. And I think there's a bunch of fence sitters and I think there's a bunch of backseat car riders when the crime was committed and... I think everyone's got, you know, uh, a choice, a choice. Who will you serve? And, uh, you know, it sure makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I mean, I have a lot of, guys, I'll just be honest. Sometimes I have a lot of, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what the word is, but I sit there and I look at images of myself falling out of the sky constantly upside down. And I'm going, what is up with that? And then I go, vampire sunglasses? What are you kidding? And then I go, come out of the darkness into the light. It's being our, our tagline, you know, our slogan. The other slogan is rise with the sun, you know, because you're a vampire. It says rise with the S-O-N, and the O is a big yellow ball. Get it? Rise with the sun? Come on. I mean, seriously, I'm just going, do you think God maybe, you know, predestined, predestined us to give some hints out, you know, to pass out some info, to get people running towards the, the, the Lord and saying, wow, this stuff's impossible. I mean, Zin's, the stuff Zen has been talking about is blowing me out of my chair. I'm just sitting here going, wow, it's so obvious, guys. Anyway, Jesus is, is the one. He's the only way. He's the only way back home. I See, I like the way that is. The only way back home. Then, the Lord said this, Johnny. Yeah. This is from the Pistis Sophia. He said, okay. For the sake of sinners, therefore, have I torn myself asunder at this time and have brought them the mysteries that I may free them from the from the eons of the rulers and bind them to the to the inheritances of the light and not only the sinners but also the righteous in order that I may give them the mysteries and that they may be taken into the light for without mysteries they cannot be taken into the light and so the whole reason we're here in the flesh now is to awaken to the light that is within us, that is the Christ, and our connecting link to the Father and to the Son. Because He is within us. The kingdom is within. And it's for us to come to realize that Christ can redeem us to salvation and to eternal life and that he came into the flesh in order to to restore us to our first estate and to remind us 
of from where we had fallen from and to where we had fallen to and to where we have yet to go. Because the biggest part to play in all of it is still ahead of us. And we have to be ready for that because it's quickly coming upon us all. Amen. Listen listen to him. I want to read Isaiah 45, guys. Listen to this. Just keep what he just said in mind, what, what Dan just said. Uh, but I, I, want to, I want to show you light and darkness. I want to show you this awesome scripture. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of king, to open before him. Okay, guys, I also want to remind you, before I read this part of the scripture, Daniel 2.43 says, there are the gates of, there's the bronze, and then there's the the toes that are mixed with the uh, iron right. the, and the miry clay. Guys, miry clay. And, and they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. I've been telling everybody over and over, the iron part is that demonic alien thing. Okay, picture DNA right now in your mind. Picture DNA. Picture the two long strands with the bars in between. So let's make the bar, let's make the, the long strands bronze. And then we'll make the bars iron. Now listen to this scripture. I will go before thee. Listen, I will loose the loins of kings and open before him the two levied gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Listen, I will give thee treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places, that thou may knowest that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Listen closely. For Jacob's my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, thou, though thou hast not though thou hast not known me, that thou may knowest from the rising of the sun and from the west there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop Amen. down, ye heavens, from above. Let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. Let them bring up Bring forth salvation. Let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Listen to this. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, Why makest thou or thy work? He hath no hands. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, Why begettest thou or to a woman? What hast thou brought forth? And saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning my works of my hands, and ye command me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even, I, even my hand, have stretched out the heavens and all the hosts I have commanded. Guys, the Lord is in control of the whole thing. He made the light. He made the darkness. We are, I mean, we are literally in a battle of light and darkness. I just keep seeing it everywhere. And I'm telling you, when the real darkness comes, and it's coming, boy, if you don't, I, this is my plea for Jesus Christ right now. If you didn't do it yesterday, just like Zen said, you're late. Because you're running out of time. Time, Time's so close. <laughs> Guys, I, I literally am afraid for people. And I just hope that, that you know, listening to, to, you know, just the thing that Zen's bringing forth tonight, how obvious it is. It's so obvious. And, and I'm telling you, it ministers to me. And, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty laser focused on my pile of tennis balls. And I'll tell you what, man, this is just amazing stuff. Just, I could sit around for a long time and 
hang out with you, Zen, and listen to all this. Yeah, of course. Dude, uh, this, is, this is a lot of amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Well, so the newest and latest, the, the last book you got going on, tell us a little bit about this in closing. Okay, well, basically it's it's the Sons of God, of, and it's it's a summary of my life's work. It's, it explains who we are, why we're here, what this is all about. It gives you the scriptural foundation, all the quotations, to help you to understand how it is that the Lord allowed me and blessed me with this discernment and led me to this understanding. And with all this knowledge and all this information and all of it unified and codified in such a way that you have it before you in one book, this will give you the opportunity to embrace all these things for yourself and to decide for yourself how they affect your life. Because there's so many books and so many scriptures that most people have never heard about, never had a chance to read. And the Lord has allowed me to unify the puzzle of truth that underlies all of them and to present it to you in such a way that it verifies scripture right and it helps to it helps you to understand what is being spoken about in all the different mythologies of the world and how they tie together with the the foundation of the bible and and the word that's awesome man because you know what I mean, that's that's fascinating Zen, because you know i i see exactly what you're saying and in the best way for me to just compare it as you know what the pictures God gives me verifies the 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 Bible. Otherwise, exactly. I would have, I would have stepped off the curb in front of the, like the number four bus going fifty miles an hour and said, you know, did anyone see Groundhog Day? <laughs> Everyone see the part where Bill Murray tries to off himself like every kind of way there is. <laughs> right, right, right. Seriously, I mean the 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 images that the Lord shows me were so disturbing that if they weren't in the Bible, I would have just, you know, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. But all of it's in the Bible, praise God. I was like, oh, my God, look at the sheep and goats. It's right here. It says, I will judge between one sheep and another, separating the sheep from the goats. And I believe as well, who are the sheep or the goats? Tells you right there who they are. The real, the real clincher was when I, <laughs> the real puzzle changer was when I saw the picture of me with a sheep and a goat on me. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I mean, am I a sheep or am I a goat? <laughs> I was like, I was just going, uh, uh, I don't get it. Uh, uh, there's, you know, there's a dead sheep and there's a goat too. I'm both. And that right. man, I. You should have so seen you're my. Born again. Yeah, pray. There you go, bro. Thank you. I my eye had become single, and yeah, exactly. I couldn't I couldn't see that I was a sheep and goat at the right. same time until the Lord gave me His Spirit, and then I could see. And I here's one of my favorite scriptures, guys. Jesus said, "I've come to judge the world and to give sight." To the blind and to show those that think they see that they are blind and the Pharisees said quote are you saying we're blind and then Jesus said to the Pharisees quote if you were blind you wouldn't be guilty but your guilt remains because you claim you can see do you get it if you can't see this stuff that's kind of an indication of your guilt because that means you're spiritually blind. Right. Yeah, it's powerful, man. And, you know, Zen, your stuff does this. It's the same thing, man. I just, I see it. I see your stuff, and I see its correlation, and it's just fingered into the Bible, you know, so well. And, by the way, you know, guys, just so you know, uh, you know, I do this. I pray. And I took this before the Lord during the show. And I said, what do you think about this, Lord? And the word he gave me was approved, just so you know. Amen. Amen. So, I, yeah, I did. I took it, and that's 100% no line. I mean, guys, I'm called to it. Otherwise, 
I get spanked and the gifting goes away and I go into manic depression. I ha I pray that a, 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 the Lord will, you know, just take me out and, you know, I'll find myself sitting out back with a gourd go growing over me. <laughs> so, so yeah, I took it before the Lord during the show and I said, what, a, what do you think, Lord? This is amazing. It's witnessing to me and the word he showed me was approved and it was highlighted even. How about that? Isn't that it? Praise our Lord. Yeah, dude. Hey, I got a quote for you, Johnny. Oh, hello, okay. I'm this ready is for a, it. This is a beautiful quote, one that most people have not uh, heard about. And it's from the Apocryphon of John, which is from the Nag Hammadi Codices. And this kind of summarizes everything. It says this. And he made a plan with his powers. He sent his angels to the daughters of men that they might take some of them for themselves and raise the offspring for their enjoyment, and at first they did not succeed. When they had no success, they gathered together again, and they made a plan together. They created a counterfeit spirit who resembles the spirit who had descended, so as to pollute the souls through it. And the angels changed themselves in their likeness into the likeness of their mates, the daughters of men and filling them with the spirit of darkness which they had mixed for them, and with evil they brought gold and silver and a gift of copper and iron and metal and all kinds of things, and they steered the people who had followed them into great troubles by leading them astray with many deceptions. They, the people became old without having enjoyment. They died not having found truth and without knowing the God of truth. And thus, the whole creation became enslaved forever from the foundation of the world until now. And they took women and begot children out of the darkness according to the likeness of their spirit. And they closed their hearts, and they hardened themselves through the hardness of the counterfeit spirit until now. Wow. That is just amazing. You know, it's, you know when, when you're reading it, man, I'm just like, I just got all these images going through my mind that I decrypt. You know, I, I just... I wish I could, you know what, I, I got to get more images up for you guys. You know, when these guys come into town on Sunday, guys, I'm going to try and, uh, on this next video, I'm going to try and show you all a bunch more imagery and just show you how prevalent it is. Even if I go, you know what, we're just going to do imagery 101 is, is, a, is a segment where I just, you know, I'm just, instead of just, you know how I decrypted the hieroglyph on the Kingdom Divided series? I think I'm going to do that with some images of the Virgin where I just put it up on the board. I grab a Sharpie and I just draw it in for you. Because what he's reading, I'm drawing. That's just insane. It's unbelievable. It's all true, guys. And here's the, here's the most awesome part is, you know, Jesus Christ is the spirit of all truth, you know. Jesus said, you know, only those who who can accept the truth, hear my voice. Are you, are those, who, those who hear my voice, are my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Only those who can accept the truth hear my voice. Um, guys, if you're not willing to open your heart to the truth and just ask God to reveal it to you, don't believe Zen, don't believe me, don't believe Professor Truth. I'm not kidding when I say that. I'm not being a smart aleck. I am telling you to take it to God yourself because if you ask the Lord, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it says the Holy Spirit discerns all things. The Spirit of God will guide you into all truth. You do not need anyone to teach you what is true, for the Spirit himself teaches you all things. So, you know, Zen came about things through the Spirit of truth, the way the Lord led him. I came about it the way the Lord led me. You know, Alexander Bachman, Johnny Baptist, Professor Truth, we all have parts, and the Lord shows it to us 
you know, the way that's kind of tailor designed for every individual. And I mean, I'm just like totally edified from this night. I am completely and utterly, just completely and utterly edified. And I mean, comfy, comfy edified. I'm just going, wow, that felt, ever, ever get a, you know, a, just a complete feeling of, ah, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that's it, there you go. I got it. I got it last night, too. Oh, man, God bless you, bro. This is awesome. I'm just so, you know, I'm so there, bro. I'm so, so happy. I'm so at peace is what it is. And I'm, I'm really at peace. I can look at all these weird pictures and, you know, and I can look, look at the Bible and, and say, yeah, it's true. And I can look at your stuff and go, thank God there's someone else out there that, that knows it's true too. And then I look at, you know, I listen to, you know, Professor Truth and, you know, he sees it, you know, and thank God because it, it's, the the truth is a cross, by the way, guys. The truth is burdensome to know it. And that's why you have to have a relationship with Jesus. You know, you have to have that relationship actively going because you can't just sit around and expect knowing the truth is like uh it's a non participation event. <laughs> it's uh it's a full participation required thing. Anyway, so I encourage everybody to go seek it out. Maybe go get uh, Zen's books and check it out. You know, uh, if you if you need some, you know, DVDs or you can go to my site and download them for free, or you can go watch so many YouTube videos, you'll get sick of hearing my voice. But but uh, the the information's out there. That's what I'm. Yeah, uh, I, I did say Alex, right? Alex Bachman. Yeah. Yeah, Alexander. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought I said Alex, Alexander Bachman. Yeah, absolutely. I had a great time with him on his show. I By the way, thanks, Alex. I had a great time. I'm sorry I've been a little MIA. I'm slightly overloaded, but, um, golly, thank you, Zen. I want to just thank you so much for coming on, man. I, I enjoyed it. I'm so totally edified. I want to thank you for the edification and hanging out with me and, and all of us and sharing all your stuff with us. Appreciate oh, it. it's a pleasure. My honor. My honor, brother. All, All right. Brother. Nice to share time and space with you as well. It's awesome. I can't wait to all get together. You know, this. Yeah, I wonder what the party's going to be like, you know? <laughs> hey. Oh, it's going to be grand. It's <laughs> going to be the best party ever. <laughs> Dude, no, think about it. Just for a little, you know, let's do this for a minute. Just think about it. Just think about this. A, a heaven, a, a party in the heavenly kingdom in the kingdom of light where a bunch of a bunch of mias you know that that are coming home that were saved from eternal damnation and separation from your father we're all coming home together can you imagine i'm about ready to burst into tears right now can you the imagine bodies yeah, in glorified. <laughs> hey, you know what, brother? That's one thing I wanted to say. Isn't it crazy that the scriptures say as we anxiously await the redemption of our bodies? Yeah. Ah, oh, come on. That's so obvious, guys. And you know what? Everybody gets a glorified body. I'm going to ask for a little more hair on top of my head if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I could use a little in the center, you know, maybe a little less on my back. <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah. And we all, you know, we all have that to look forward to, and it's a promise. It's a guarantee. So we're joint, joint heirs, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I mean, have y'all ever thought about that? A joint heir with Jesus Christ? I mean, a lot of people get excited about when their great aunt dies and leaves them 20000 bucks. you know. <laughs> I mean, we're going to heaven, guys. We get to go back home. I can't stand it. I don't think I can wait much longer. Anyway. Our bright nature. Wow. Praise God. Hey, uh, well, brother, I love you, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a, uh, uh, a prayer. Let's cl close in prayer, and then let's drop a song on everybody. And... Uh, Praise God. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Oh, Father, God bless these people. 
God bless Zen. God bless Johnny. God bless Professor Truth. God bless Alex Bachman. God bless, uh, you know, all these people that are giving their testimonies, trying to just declare the praises of the Lord that called us out of the darkness and into the light. We want to declare the praises of you who loved us first and, and that gave your life for us and that you came down here to this dump to, to pull us out. We want to thank you with all of our hearts. And I just humbly just, I wish I was perfect for you, Father. I, I know I wish I wish all of us were perfect for you, but that's what your business is. You you fix what's broken and you, you fix what's tainted and you clean up what's dirty. And I want to thank you that you would even consider, you know, coming to save us and, and do this for us. I'm so grateful. I'm eternally grateful. I can't wait to be there with you. Um, Jen, God bless you, brother. Thank you for coming on. I thank you so much. Thank you, brother, anytime. All right, bro. All right, man. Well, I'll let you go, and I'm going to drop a song on everybody, and I'll catch up to you manana, okay? All right, man. Love everybody in the chat room, too. You're all family. God bless you all. All right. Thanks, Jeff. I mean, thanks, Jen. Bye-bye. I had a a brain meltdown there at the very end. Um, By the way, I I wanted to mention Zeph Daniels, too. Zeph. God bless Zeph. Zephy. Yeah, you know... Just to mention Zeph Daniels for a sec, I love Zeph, great guy, he's out doing the same thing, and uh, he belongs in that, he belongs most definitely in that statement, you know, everyone that's out there doing their, their bit and peace for the kingdom of the Lord, and uh, right now is a good time for some prayers for Zeph, uh, Daniel, and my heart's with him right now, I know he's been through a lot in his life, and and um, right now, it's just I know he's having some stuff right now. I just want to lift him up in prayer and ask God to, uh, you know, protect him and protect his mind and his heart. And uh, he's, I feel very, very kindred uh, spirit with Zeph Daniels. Can't explain it. It's one of those things. I feel that same thing with Johnny and Zen and, you know, Professor Truth and Alex. It's weird. It's just feel like brothers. Anyway, um. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, anyway, um,